Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast, where we talk about all things Commander. And today we have a special treat. We are previewing a new Commander deck from March of the Machine. Uh, it's a white-black deck called Growing Threat, uh, featuring Phyrexian's Artifacts, uh, a little a little sacrifice, a little mill, a new mechanic incubate, which we'll get into, and it's also a plane chase deck. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot of things to unpack there. But before we do, let me introduce the other people sitting here with me. Uh, Budget Commander Tomer, how are you doing here? Hi, I'm super excited. And also, thank you so much, Wizards of the Coast, for the free preview. It's I'm, we love doing these, and we're super stoked to <laughs> to to share our enthusiasm with you all. And I'm super stoked. Yay! Hi, Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. <laughs> Hi, I'm super stoked too. Also a little sick, but super super stoked. This should be fun. And Crib, the Asian Avenger. I hear you're fired up. Yes, literally. I, I had really really <laughs> spicy noodles. So uh, because it's a spicy deck that you have yeah, to review. Yeah, spicy deck. So I'm gonna eat some spicy noodles. So I'm kind of like you'll ca- you'll you'll see me casually gra- like come down from this spice right <laughs> now. But uh, woo! Okay. All right. So if you're new here, <laughs> welcome. Uh, make sure to give us a like, a follow, a subscribe on whatever platform you're listening to us on. We are on uh, all your popular podcast platforms as well as YouTube. And uh, if you're also new to us, you can actually check us out jamming games over on YouTube on Commander Clash, where we put everything we talk about to actual use. And you can see us play with new janky themes every week. And uh, lastly, check out Richard's Garage, mtggoldfishmerch.com, where you can get uh, MTG Goldfish themed merchandise to help support the show. So uh, let us get underway. Uh, so first, a, a, a bit of housekeeping, right? So this is a Commander deck. That's being released with March of the Machine. It is 110 cards because it is a plane chase deck. Uh, so what does plane chase mean? So the, the common way which people will probably be playing this is with a shared deck. So there will be a deck of planes. And a plane has an ability on it, like a static, kind of like an emblem uh, that, that's just ongoing. And there are cards that will make you change the planes. It's called planes walking. Uh, we have some of them in our deck. But also... Uh, each player during their main phase, they can roll a six-sided planar die, and that's just a die that comes with plane chase decks. Uh, one side has the planeswalker symbol, one side has a chaos symbol for blank sides. So you can roll that die for a chance to change the current plane you're on, uh, planeswalking. The first roll is free every time after uh, costs an additional one. And uh, if so, if you successfully roll, which means you hit the planeswalk symbol, you get to change. If you hit the chaos symbol, uh, you trigger the chaos effect on the plane. What does this mean for you? So if you are playing with people that don't have plane chase, you bring a 40 card plane chase, uh, the, the 40 card plane deck uh, for for your friends to play with. If everyone has one, then you can play each with your own as well. And uh, you can also just do away with it. There's only a handful of cards in the deck that actually explicitly deal with plane chase. So three. Just three. You can just sub them out or just have them not do the thing. Uh, so it's not like you need to find three other players that are playing plane chase or anything. You can just play your normal yeah. uh, commander deck. So and, it's a, and you don't even uh, have to throw you don't even have to sum them out because all three of them function perfectly well in commander without the plane chase rule. It just so oh. happens that if you are running the plane planer cards, then they have an additional effect. I mean, aren't they all pretty bad if you're not playing? Yeah, plane you, you chase? probably want the plane chase, but they, <laughs> like, they still like kind of do out, something. Right? Yeah, but, yeah. They still have basic game functions and actions. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but it is very like on a fractured theme. power stone is like just a bad mind stone if you don't have plane chase, but it still functions. It's a planar invasion, right? And you get to mm-hmm. introduce everyone to to plane chase if they haven't. Um, okay. Yeah, Phyrexia's invading all the planes. It's so yeah. flavorful. I love it. I, and I'm you're trying to planes like, walk so, away. <laughs> I think and it's... then you go to another place that's invaded by Phyrexians, Richard. That's the story. There's nowhere to run. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> that's actually it's cool theme. that they. It's cool that they have this bonus thing. Is plane chase popular? Like, I honestly had forgot that that was a thing they did like a decade ago. Like, it's. Uh, it's cool that you get these 10 bonus cards that you can choose to use or not use, but have any of you ever actually ever played Plane Chase? Because I've, like, literally never played Plane Chase. I've seen the cards. Uh, I've heard, like, I've seen people play the Plane Chase-style commander, uh, and that looks really fun, but I've never actually played it. So it, uh, I, I actually, 
would like to try this out at some point. Never played it, but I, I felt the impact of some of the cards. Wasn't like Baleful Strix printed in a plane chase set. There was also like Shardless Agent, I think, showed up. I think those were initially in yeah, a plane yeah. chase deck, yeah. So it's how to how to ripple effect. I didn't know you could play with just regular commander decks and that you didn't have to prep everyone, like they can just bring their normal yeah. decks. So knowing this, I will definitely be trying out plane chase because uh it's Marvel Snap with one lane. <laughs> yeah. It like adds like, like a cool a. static or like a cool yeah. like just random ability that just changes things up, right? Sometimes the, the RNG is in your favor, sometimes it's not, right? So it just adds yeah. another dynamic element to the game. Yeah. So I really like that. Which well, we further... we'll go over some of the new planes really quickly just to, like for a snippet of what type of things... Uh, these plan- planar stuff affect the, okay. the table. Like- I'll, I'll give you one example because there's we have ten planes, five are reprints, five are new, and I don't want to just randomly go in. We haven't even introduced Brima as our commander yet, so I'll give you like Esper. Right, it's a very simple plane. It's Alara, and then the the ability is artifact spells cost one less to cast. That's it, right? So if this is on the battlefield, everyone gets the artifact uh, mana reduction, and then the chaos ability is when chaos ensues. Creatures you control that are white, blue, and or black become artifacts in addition to their own types until end of turn. Then each artifact creature you control gains Vigilance, Menace, Lifelink until end of turn. So, this, souped up artifacts, so right? Yeah. So <laughs> it has like a if you're not playing an artifact, like deck, artifact deck, you want to like, get out of here. You want to yeah, you you planes walk out of here, right? And then <laughs> Urza players are like, rejoice, right? So, yeah. it, it has that element uh, to the game. So I mean, it's like a struggle of finding the planes you like while opponents are trying to get you off that plane to a plane that they like. And that's kind of like the whole shtick. It's fun. It it truly does. I already thought Commander was like Magic's board game, but this really does add to Magic's board game like 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 elements. Right. So I I really like the idea. It doesn't matter what these did, even if it just Mm -hmm. like blow up all my blue, my own blue permanents. Like, it's great. Like, I, I love. The RNG, the nonsense that it brings, I think that this is like, this is hilariously fun. This is exactly right. what I I I, I want to do. This I want to do this so bad. Yeah, it's a it's a sometimes game. Like sometimes you want to do it to spice it up, but like if you don't want to, it's totally optional. And there's only three cards that even care about it, so you can just ignore. It. If you don't like these things, you can just ignore it. But if you want to try it out, then it's it's like free value. You know, it's free. It's, it's extra uh, for, stuff for all you old old timers. It's like Momir. But in Commander, oh, like, there's, like, this random, there's this <laughs> random <laughs> element to it that can really help you or really hurt you. So it adds a little yeah. spice. Bring uh, bring Vanguard to Commander, <laughs> Wizards of the Coast, if you're listening to this. Bring Vanguard. I'm waiting. Well, that's super old school. All right, so let's go to our actual game. deck here. It's a Phyrexian deck, okay? It's Brimaz. Uh, our, our favorite cat has uh, been turned into Phyrexian. Kind of sad. Uh, but the main themes... So you're, you're, why are you getting this deck? It's an Orzov deck. It's a black and white deck. Uh, it's a Phyrexian deck. So there are 25 cards that are Phyrexian related. Uh, it's also an artifact deck. Uh, 39 cards that are or are, they care about artifacts. A new mechanic incubate, which we'll get to when we get to an incubate card. But there are five incubate cards. And then there's a little sacrifice and self mill themes going on. Uh, all in all, you're getting uh, 10 new cards. Uh, with this, you're, uh, they're just brand new cards from the commander set. And then you're getting one new card that's uh, being printed from the main set that's also included here. And then five new planes. And then the rest will be reprints. Uh, so we're going to dive deep into the commander, into the new cards. We're going to go over uh, the new cards, the new planes. And then we're going to go over a summary of the rest of the cards, of the reprints. Any high value or highly desirable reprints. And also give you a little breakdown about like how much removal and ramp and, and those things are in the deck. All right. Our cat, Brimaz. Oh, and if you're listening on podcasts, uh, you may want to check us out on YouTube. We'll be showing the images here. Otherwise, you'll have to hear uh, my my reading of the words. Uh, there's a lot of words on these magic cards. And uh, you won't be able to appreciate the art. We'll, we'll leave the art uh, explanation to, <laughs> to someone else. So, Brimaz, Blight of Orescos. Two white and a black, four mana value, legendary creature Phyrexian cat, three, four. When you cast a Phyrexian creature or artifact creature spell, incubate X, where X is that spell's mana value. 
Uh, I'll tell you what incubators in a second. At the beginning of each end step, if a Phyrexian died under your control this turn, proliferate. Okay, so what is incubate? So when you incubate, you create a token with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. And it's just a random uh, artifact token. And then you can pay 2 to transform this artifact. It transforms into a 0-0 Phyrexian artifact creature token. Uh, so it is essentially an egg, not an egg, because they don't come out of eggs, but like it's like this dormant Phyrexian uh, that mm. has power, you know, plus one, plus one counters on it. And then at any moment, you can pay two to uh, do the alien thing and have it spring forth Hatch. and become a creature. <laughs> Hatch yeah. and become a creature. It, oh, that's like a new mechanic. Here. Creature clues, right? Or creature, yeah. creature food clues. or yeah. creature, yeah. any of those million artifact yeah. token mechanics. Yeah. Yeah. How good is Breon's I mean, here? He, this is the commander of the deck. If I mean, I think if you want to be a Phyrexian deck, it's good. There's not many legends that specifically care about Phyrexians. So if hmm. you want to build like a Phyrexian tribal deck, we'll see what else. Like This is before spoiler season that we're recording this, so maybe there's some other ones in March of the Machines proper and the other commander decks. But at this point, if you want to build a Phyrexian tribal deck, I think this is kind of your default commander because we don't have other commanders that care about it. And I think Incubate's a powerful ability awkwardly i think that works better with the artifact part of Bramas than the phyrexian part it's almost like a split card where like you if you're gonna build phyrexian tribal you're probably not gonna get that much value out of incubate i guess you can try to like have a proliferate sub theme because maybe some of your phyrexians can deal infect damage or give poison counters or something but i almost feel like you could go two directions where you can build Bramas as a straight up like play all the sweet phyrexian creatures and a lot of them are in black and white or you could disregard the Phyrexian text altogether and build a pretty powerful, like, artifact, sub-theme, incubate-style deck. So there's really two very, I think, distinct directions you can go that are not, like, super closely related to each other. Mm-hmm. I think well, the, yeah. the effects wait, 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 are very wait, powerful. Aren't they related? You, you, like, they both make Phyrexians, right? Yeah, but you could you could trigger Brumaz's ability off Phyrexian creatures... Yeah. Or artifact creatures. Yeah. So like, aren't you better I mean, off? It works, but <sighs> right. But wouldn't you be better off playing your like soul rings and like zero mana artifacts and like just going to town? So, so you have to cast no, like artifact creature spell. Yeah, it's not. Oh, soul so it has to be like, like solo. Like you, you can play yeah. like dirty mm. cantrip creatures, but like you there's can't like just cards go like, non creature. There's oh, like cards yeah. like burnished heart are in the in the deck, for example, and they're not Phyrexian, but they'll still trigger Brima. So you could. You could go, like, artifact creatures, but I just feel like there's a lot better options if you wanted to just go for artifact creatures. This one, I think, has an additional benefit for Phyrexians in general because of that secondary ability. At the beginning of each end step, if a Phyrexian died under your control this turn, proliferate. That counts the incubation, the incubated uh, uh, creatures that you're making. But also, if you're just playing a bunch of Phyrexians, if they're dying, um, then you're also proliferating more. And we also have a bit of a sacrifice sub theme. So there are ways to kind of like guarantee that your opponent, that your stuff is going to die on opposing turns to get more than one trigger per turn cycle. So I like this. I think this is much stronger than like making a clue, for example, because just like if you play like a five drop Phyrexian, having just like a five, five creature that you can p- proliferate and continue to grow over time. Like, yeah, it costs two mana to do that, but like. It's a Phyrexian. It's an artifact creature. There's a lot of synergy potential. They just grow with Brumaz as well. I, I think this card puts a lot of power on the battlefield, which is really nice. Yeah. I, I, I also love just, like, the fact that this kind of spawns an army pretty quickly, right? Uh, well, I guess as fast as, like, it'll be whatever power or the of the mana value of all the creatures that you're playing that are artifacts. But definitely spawns an army, and I think it looks pretty cool because of that. So let, let I don't know. I like it's super mana hungry it's, though. It's Phyrexian Panermonicon, right? You 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 you, you, you <laughs> where's play my a creature ETVs, of like three where's mana my ETVs? value. <laughs> you get you, my you get a second. Character. You get a, you get an egg. You get a you get an incubated version of it that you can spring yeah. forth later. Uh, yeah. So you're, you're doubling I, up all your creatures, except you get to save them, right? So you I can imagine you play value creatures, uh, artifact creatures, or Phyrexian, and then you board wipe. And then you uh, you hatch all your your Phyrexians. I mean, yeah. there are there are some synergies there. I will say, like Panermonicon, like 
I want my Muldrift to draw me cards, not just be a 5-5. Five, five. Like, that's a, that's a little bit not exactly the same, but it works well with evoke creatures. Like, if you evoke a Solitude, that's a 5-mana value creature that you're casting for free, and you're getting Wait, that 5 well, No, it has to be Phyrexian or an artifact yeah. creature. Well, I am very much misunderstood. See, this is why you're <laughs> so podcast while you're sick. If you, you have turned you, your Solitude into a Phyrexian somehow, right? Yeah. Um, Aw. Every cool thing that I think of just doesn't work with this card. Okay, okay, Actually, okay, though, okay I'll, like, I'll give you actual synergies in the deck, right? Scrap Trawler, right? Yep. Scrap Trawler. Phyrexian yeah. Rager, right? For, like These are yep. all like cantrippy value creatures that will trigger the Incubate. Um, Phyrexian Ghoul is like a sack outlet. Burnished Heart, like Tomer mentioned before. Uh, Bloodline Pretender like is like kind of a pseudo-lord that will trigger this as well. Um, I mean... What's the yeah. the one from Brothers War? The one that's like the seven five that has a prototype, like that would trigger it because it's an artifact creature. Yeah. So there's yeah. lots of there's a lot of cool things that you could do with this. Uh, like, but it just makes me want to be a full on like artifact aggro deck, like kind of like Orzov affini- uh, affinity. Yeah, affinity stuff actually does work. Mm-hmm. With it. Your mirror enforcer would give you a lot of counters on an incubator. Yeah, I mean there, there's, I like some good, there's some good random Phyrexians. Remember there was yeah. uh, the update. The, the gather update yeah. where they made a bunch now of now we're seeing why right? that is yeah yeah uh, but like things <laughs> like massacre worm like you you play massacre worm anyway it's phyrexian right and you would trigger uh you would trigger this things like noxious gear hulk it's it's a panoramic on set you kill something you yeah. have a five four menace and you get a six six incubated creature <laughs> sitting around okay yeah. okay uh, that one's not, a, for, not a removal, right? but it is an artifact creature so yeah cheers. for flavor you should get activated sleeper I mean, like, that's from a prior yeah. computer deck. That's a Phyrexian shapeshifter. It, it's it's pretty cool, dude. Yeah. I don't know. Like, if, if you're into, like, the whole, like, Phyrexian lore and all that, there's definitely a lot you could do here. Uh, I like, like... Yeah. I also really like how Richard said the the synergy of board wipes. Like, both, if you're playing an aggro deck, the worst thing in the world is, like, having just your board wiped, and then you're like, okay, now what do I do? I can't attack anymore. But if you have, like, a bunch of these, like, uh, incubate, incubator pods. tokens on the battlefield. Sleeper pods. Like, all right, you do you do your primary game plan. You eat the board wipe, and then on your turn, you just uh, activate your sleeper agents. And by the way, like they won't have they they won't have summoning sickness if you created them uh, the turn before or whatever. So they're ready to attack immediately. So you, I really like that aspect. The, like you could turn them, uh, activate them at instant speed, though, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah you so- can. So that, yeah, you don't even have to do it on your turn. Just wait until the mm-hmm. sweeper, end of their turn. Obviously, don't overcommit, so you you now just have enough pressure on the board. Uh, and you just wait for the sweeper, and then you activate everything after the sweep. Yeah, I mean, the, the problem is everyone sees the little Phyrexians, like, ready to hatch, right? Yeah. They're not going to be like, yeah. ooh, let me sweep. And then, like, oh, where did this giant <laughs> yeah. army come from? Don't oh, destroy me because I tapped out to <laughs> You'd be sweep. surprised, all right? <laughs> they better little... It's, then you keep your board, right? So, I've like, done they, worse things than Commander. <laughs> <laughs> How... How do you uh how important do you think is flipping those tokens? Because one of the things we've seen with other similar artifact tokens is a lot of their values, like having an artifact on the battlefield, or you can sacrifice it or up your artifact count. Do you think that incubate is gonna work similarly to that? Or do you think it's you really want to be focusing on having mana to try to turn these into creatures to make them oh, good? You're saying not even you trick people. You're like, oh look at my yeah. incubated well, army, then I just Urza saga <laughs> make like a construct and kill you with it. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. That's how we, well, we see that with clues and food quite a bit. Like yeah. gaining yeah, three yeah. life isn't very good, but there's decks that just want a massive artifacts on the battlefield, and then food's yeah. very good there. Uh, so I assume that you can do kind of the same thing, right? You're just yeah. like having these artifacts on the battlefield, even if you never find the mana to flip them, or maybe you play some cheap stuff that isn't giving you very powerful incubates where it's like, I don't want to spend two mana to get a one, one. Like that's kind of silly. Like maybe yeah. you can still get value out of just having the artifact on the battlefield. Yeah. They, they, they're not in the pre-con, but like off the top of my head, like inspiring statuary, you can start tapping these for mana. Um, you can trigger, you can uh, t- toggle on metal craft spells, uh, with this, like dispatch, for example, they're not in the deck, but like these are these are definitely ways that you can take advantage of the fact that you just have a bunch of artifact tokens just passively uh, entering the battlefield as as you're just casting your spells. So it's cool. Right. It's a cool card. I like it. So let, let's head on over to some of the new cards, and uh, we'll see if there's any that synergize. Like spoiler alert, they probably do because they're in the precon. Uh, <laughs> 
Bitterthorn Nissa's Animus. Three mana, legendary artifact, equipment, living weapon. Uh, when this equipment enters a battlefield, create a 0-0 zero, zero black Phyrexian germ creature token, then attach this to it. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one. Whenever equipped creature attacks, you may search your library for a basic land card and put it on the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. Equipped three. Okay, ironically, does not... So this does not synergize Primaz. in any way, <laughs> anyway, right? Not an artifact get... creature, not a Phyrexian. Oh, it's a Phyrexian. You get, it's a Phyrexian. You don't get the it cast makes a Phyrexian trigger. Trigger. But it's if it dies, you, you get the Phyrexian, free. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah yes. you have to cast it. It You're doesn't get the cast the trigger, but it gets the proliferate trigger yes. on Brimaz. Okay. Oh, yeah. if it I mean, if it dies, it dies. Yeah. It's oh, a yeah, sort I guess of that's... the animus that comes with a, bo- a Phyrexian body. It's awesome, and it's Bitterthorn because sort of the animus was Nissa's animus, and now that mm-hmm. she's completed, she has a little germ buddy. She gave she put her animus into a little germ buddy. It's I'm so actually. Funny curious how you guys rank this compared to sort of animus like you're paying one more mana to cast it and also to equip it but you get a one one creature so you don't have to equip it the first time theoretically how like uh, it discount obviously in the precon there's no sort of the animus so this is the best one in the precon but outside of the precon would you play this over sort of the animus or the other competition i guess is sort of hearth and home is three mana and two to equip and does a lot of the same stuff where does this rank in that hierarchy of equipment that tutor up basic lands uh i mean i don't think the living weapon like the living weapon weapon is nice because then i don't have to like pay to equip uh like once it comes down right i could just let the token mm-hmm. die out do whatever but i don't know i, I don't even like sort of the animus so <laughs> Wait, what? It's going to be I, tough I, I for a 1-1 one, one to get in so there. You don't like Sword of the Animus because you don't have creatures to equip it to, right? You're like, oh, sure. I don't want to play, like, <laughs> Spirited <laughs> Companion to just turn on the Sword of the Animus. That's ridiculous, right? So this fixes it. It's Living Weapon. It's just really, like, mediocre ramp for non-green decks, but you'll take that, right? <laughs> like, if you're playing Grixis, like, you don't have any ramp options. If you're playing Grixis and you play... No creatures, you don't have ramp options, right? Because you can't use any Richard. of the swords. But now you have I mean, Nissa's Animus. The su- there are mana rocks. <laughs> Richard. No, 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 like yeah. actual land what, ramp, not what the spell land ramp. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what rocks. basics? I have like four basics in my deck. <laughs> now oh, you gotta include five to right, make so sure you can bitter thorn Nissa's exactly. Animus. Exactly. <laughs> like I will lose to every Blood Moon that is played. Like it is, yeah. it is that it is that way for a reason. There's so many good lands, I just don't have enough basics. So I think this card is just not great in gr- like a like I maybe in a two color deck. If if you like Sword of the Animus, then sure, this card's cool. I think this card if that if that is a card for you, then this card works just like it's your Sword of the Animus number two. I rank it a little bit lower than Sword of the Animus, just because I think just the one one by itself is not really going to get there because it doesn't come with any evasion or anything. So you do want to equip to a bigger thing usually, I believe, or something with evasion, um, and it's worth uh, doing that. Um, so I like sort of the animus, and that's fine. But yeah, it's, yeah. it's okay because it's an attack to... trigger. Like think yeah, of it yes. as wood elves, like three mana yeah. ramp, but it takes you. Yeah, I can just attack an extra turn to actually get the ramp yeah. because you're not greed, oh. right? Bad Whereas... ramp and growth with upside. Sort of the Animus is four mana, right? Because you got to pay two yeah. and then equip it. This is three mana and then you get to ramp. So it's slightly cheaper, it's but then you equal. can't. I mean, you got to get in the attack, though, still. So yeah. you'd have to, yeah. I mean, who, I mean, someone's going to fire off that Swords to Plowshares on your germ token? Like, <laughs> I want it. I want it. Wow. It, will deny, it will deny the, the death trigger on Brimaz. So the value. That's right. <laughs> You could be getting wrathed already. Yeah. Like, it is three mana. That's like, that's, you're getting to the round by the time it comes back around the table. Wrath could come down. One thing I will yeah. say is, like, worst case, it seems like a budget sort of the Animus and sort of Hearth. And I was surprised when I looked those cards up and saw both of those are, like, over $10 now. So maybe, like, worst case, this will be a, a very accessible version for yeah, everyone I mean, to play. Sort of the Animus is over $10. Yeah, it's so good. highly desirable. That's a commander oh, staple. That's why, oh, okay. like, even I if mean, this is there's a lot of Richard, although that's debatable, like that's still really yeah. good, right? Because sort of the animus yeah. is so good, right? So I'm right. running it. I'm running in my Tashiro deck. I run every single land ramp card in mono black because I run every single mana doubler. I'm yeah. running like Cage Sun. I'm running all the Crypt Gas, the Magus, all the Coffer effects and stuff like that. So like, I'm hungry for any 
halfway decent land ramp card. So I'm putting it alongside my Sword of Hearth and Home and, uh, and my Sword of the Animus. I mean, um, that seems great in this Brimaz deck because yeah, it's better you, it, does want, it does want mana, right? Then that way you get to, like, crack the sleeper pods if anything happens. You just have more things to do with your excess mana. And if it attacks once and gets blocked, then you, like, ramped and proliferated a Brimaz is on the battlefield. So, yeah, it's not bad. All yeah. right. Next up, Blight Titan. Four black, black. Creature, Phyrexian Giant, 6-6, six, six, Death Touch. When Blight... T- Blight Titan enters the battlefield or attacks, mill two cards, then incubate X, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Create an incubate... Oh, let's just spoiler checks. Uh, FYI, yeah. we have 26 creatures in this pre-con, which seems a little low for this. No, 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 no. We have 26 reprinted creatures, and oh, then we right, have right, like right. a bunch of... Maybe yeah. Most of most one, of the new cards one, are two, actually creatures. Three, four... I think there's... Maybe Five, four six. more? One, six two, more? One, two, three, four. So 32 creatures? Five, six, seven. I count seven new ones. So, so 33 30, three three creatures? Three. Yeah. yeah. So I, so I feel like, like this card's medium, like... But not big. I feel like the card's pretty medium in the in the precon itself. Like, I think I like the callback to Grave Titan, but this deck, it isn't super focused on filling your graveyard there's like this card mills a little bit there's like some very light sacrifice synergies but this isn't like some sort of a zony deck or self mill deck where you're going to be playing this and have you know half your deck in your graveyard or something most likely you can get wrath and get some value off of that i feel like this is a card that's like in the precon it's fine i think it can be very powerful in like dedicated self mill decks though like if this is coming down near a zony deck where you're playing like 40 50 creatures and your whole game plan is just to fill your graveyard Graveyard, this is probably making a 10 10 or 20 20 token every turn which is ridiculous like that's that's a ton of power to be added to the battlefield yeah i think this card is super cool obviously in the pre-con it, it's just like like solid but like just in, in any kind of like golgari deck that like you know stick fingers whatever you this is going to come down and start making big things right like this is a sweet card i i, I love it i don't know how powerful it is like uh, for me it just seems solid like a fun card i'd like to play with yeah, I think it's like good here, but it could be even better, like in a city C deck or whatever. And if it, you can give it haste as well too, so you can get yeah. the double the trigger on when you cast it on the turn <laughs> into the battlefield, then it's really good. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot I, I of think, damage. I mean, so obviously, if you're in a self mill deck, you can make like thirty thirties or something like ridiculous, right? But like just a valuey, yeah. like you come in and you make like two five fives. You have to pay four yeah. mana, but like you know that's that's pretty decent, right? That's not like embarrassing or anything you, like, don't, you don't have to go all and make like right? a 50 50 right you could just make a, yeah. a four four five a five, four right? four yeah like that's you only incubate very... once though right am i missing yeah. that like you get one incubate on you attack, attack or you attack etb but it's or... etb or attack yeah. yeah so it's not like grave titan where you get two tokens oh, right, right, so you yeah, get yeah. each one... trigger gets only one incubate okay but you can yeah, get yeah. multiple triggers with multiple attacks yeah right how's it compared to grave titan like it's... I like it. I like it more because the milling is nice. Like, like the deck actually has. We'll, we'll get into the stats, a uh, stat breakdown at the end. But the deck actually has some very powerful uh, recursion abilities, more than its card draw. Its card draw is kind of weak, but its uh, its recursion is very good. So, like, if you if you're in a deck that actually cares about milling, then it, it's it's helping in that respect too. It's not just making incubation tokens. I mean, I love that. I I think it's better than Grave Titan. Um, just be like all that matters is that you get something on ETB and when it attacks, the token that you make is on average probably going to be bigger than the two two zombies, right? So we have to pay I, two mana. I mean, yeah, sure, you have to pay two mana for it. But the thing here is, you do get to like self mill. Uh, your tokens are bigger than just two twos. I don't know. I like that. I think it's a solid card. It's. I mean, I've already said it before though. I think the Titans just aren't powerful enough anymore, except for Prime Time. Sun Titan though, what? The... Sun Titan's fine. Sun Titan's a fine card. Sun Titan's the best card in the world. <laughs> like, okay, I mean, sure. the, the ceiling yeah, on this okay. card is insane, right? <laughs> if you if you yeah. actually have a lot of creatures, uh, but yeah. it costs two mana. So I think on average, I like Grave Titan. Like I don't have to spend mana to make my creature, but I only get a zombie, right? So it depends on what you're trying to do. Uh, the good thing with this is you don't have to overcommit to the board. Like you can make one forty mm. forty. And then start incubating the other ones so that when someone wraths, then you hatch it. 
so like the ceiling is definitely way higher on this, right? Uh, but you got to kind of build around it and, you know, take advantage of it. It doesn't. It doesn't immediately stabilize, I don't think, as well as Grave Titan, yeah. where you just like yeah. have this huge board of bodies to keep you alive. But yeah, the, there is yeah. definitely a lot of upside here, and the self mill is definitely a bonus. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, next up, Dark Steel Splicer, six and a white, so seven mana value, oh, so one much. one. So it better be doing something good. Uh, Phyrexian <laughs> Artificer. Scourge. Whenever Dark Steel Splicer or another non-token Phyrexian enters the battlefield under your control. Create X three three colorless Phyrexian Golem artifact creature tokens where X is the number of opponents you have. Golems have indestructibility. So it's, it's, <clears throat> you make a silly amount of golems, right? A, in like, this deck, yeah. In this deck, like in a Phyrexian style deck, you're going to like at least like pop out golems left and right. They are just three threes though, but they are indestructible. Indestructible. They are indestructible. So you do... I don't know. Like, I feel like the cost of this being seven mana, though, is a bit too pricey, right? You have to reanimate this thing. This thing is, (laughs) like... (laughs) like, You're not just paying seven mana for this because it's going to feel so bad when, like, you pay seven mana and then somebody's, like... Stories of Flash Shares, you're 1-1. One, one. Yeah, like, like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> Fun. Like I, this th- I, but then you've now I mean, you still get the this. golems, right? You get one golem, but it's not even indestructible anymore when it leaves the battlefield. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But- this... This one's cool. Like I, I, I think it's fun. I, I it's got like, an I army also... of light steals in the art. Exactly. It's not so cool. It, but I it's love just it. a one one. It, it's better in a golem mana. deck, right? Like where sure. you can give sure. your golems like flying or like you know other abilities. Um, you can blink. Like you know, you can blink stuff. You can actually blink all blink your it. all your Phyrexians as well. And remember, you don't get one golem, crimin- right? You get uh, a golem for, for each this opponent makes... you have, right? Yeah, so, so if you yeah. play this by yourself for reanimate, you, you get three golems yeah. and the one right. run. And then every uh, frag scene you play is going to give you three more golems. Like, assuming you're in a four-player game, but you're going to get three more golems. Yeah. yeah. So, you're, so it's, it's, it's a kind of like ten, ten Summoner. In a full yeah. indestructible... In a... I take it back. I love this card. This card is good. It's worth seven mana. What I, am I wait, even talking wait, about? Wait, 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 wait. Really? That, oh, yeah. I, you, it enters the battlefield one time. You make three golems. Three, yeah. three, three golems. Three, and, and they're indestructible it. as long as that's around. And then you and can blink it. And then every or, other Phyrexian that's entering yeah, the battlefield non is, is going to be making three more. So, so you <laughs> play this, and then you play, like, Phyrexian Rager, which is, like, the three mana 2-2 two, two that draws a card, right? Sure. Yeah. And, then, yeah. then you pop and you out get another three tokens. And then if you get Wrath, like, because they're all dying, at, they all see each other die at the same time, your golems will live and only the Splicer will die. So they have to remove the Splicer first. Or they have to do, like, uh, like a Blasphemous Sack or something like that, where there's damage still yeah. on them. Uh, but, like, if somebody, like, Damnations or something like that, your Splicer will die, but your golems will live. So, I don't yeah, know, this I, card's gas. This I is, like, a good, good top end. And there is, like, a reanimation sub-theme in the deck, too. Although, I think you're right, Richard, that, like, this card's probably absurd in an actual Golem deck. Like, I think it's a cool mm. finisher in this deck, but uh, a lot of the Golems are Phyrexians, too, right? Like, Blade Splicer and all that kind of stuff. Like, the, those are part of the are Rata. They? that I, so, I believe so. So, so this, this deck is, like, a weird uh, Golem deck in disguise, right? So we have Blade Splicer, which makes a 3-3 mm-hmm. three for 3 mana, yep. and then gives you first strike uh you have mass splicer splicer splicer. Is eroded into phyrexian like all these splicers are all phyrexians yeah, they're around, all phyrexians so. so so you get so master splicer you get plus one plus one for all your golems right uh and then you have the two you have meteor golem which is a golem which removes something on etv then you have my two favorites phyrexian triniform <laughs> which is the nine man and nine nine that creates three colorless golems encore 12 and then you have Ancient Stone Idol, which is 10 mana, 12, 12. And then it costs one less for each attacking creature. So, and for Exxon Yeah. Oh, wait. I said that. that. Never mind. So, the, the, uh-huh. like, there's a very strong <laughs> golem sub theme going on in this deck as well. Yeah. Yeah, this card's really good. I almost wish it was legendary. It would be a cool commander for a golem deck. Like, those, oh, that would be super sweet. Still seven mana, though. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's a lot, but, but it does like have a lot of three, power. You three yeah, it's, 
It's worth its mana cost. And then if you can reanimate it, it that's like just piss. Ah, I guess the baby It's I, so much damage on the board. I think it's like, okay, it's not bad. It's just like... I mean, if you untap well, like this... If, if, if we're you, saying you Brave win, Titan's right? okay, because you'll you just pay like one more? Play like two more Phyrexians or something and just like plop down the entire... You know, you'd be making like 40 power or something ridiculous, right? So... I am making yeah. more 3-3 three, three golems, yes, correct. 3-3 <laughs> hey, three, golems can win a game of three, three <laughs> It's like, like one toxic deluge is all I need. Yeah, like, like, <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm higher on the Titan than I am on this card. Ugh. I think the Titan self-milling and all that is just, like, Ugh. way cooler. Ugh. And it's on attacks. Well, nah, I think nah, nah, I'm nah. taking Dirk Steel's Placer all day. Yeah, I, I, I think I, I, really I, sweet. I, I have a soft spot for Blade Splicer. And then, like, anything that makes... <laughs> like, Blade Splicer then is, like, a three mana, make four three threes <laughs> with, like, first strike after this thing is out. Like... Oh, ridiculous, yeah. It's ridiculous. I, I see what Krim is saying, though. You're just like, they're still just three threes. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> Maybe yes, they're four fours, I, but whatever, right? They're like, yeah. <laughs> I've read the card. I, I know how it works. You know, I understood it right from the get-go, and I still Read it again. Read it again, like, it again and then cast Code of Arms. Because <laughs> okay. I read it wrong the first okay. time, yeah. <laughs> well, now I really know that it's just okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, I got, I got one that I think Krim will like. Excise yeah. the Imperfect. One white, white. It's an instant. Three mana value. Exile target non-land permanent. Its controller incubates X, where X is its mana value. Wait, I'm paying three mana to give you. I guess... Okay, this on. is generous. It's like yeah. generous gift. Can't hit, it's a generous you gift, yeah. can't hit a you land. exile. So it's like oblation. But it exiles. Except... Um, it exiles, you know, they get. Though. They get... To hatch a Phyrexian on you, depending on how big the thing you removed was. That could be so, good or bad. <laughs> yeah. So, like, if somebody has a Ristic study and you excise them perfect on it, it's exile so they can never get it back. And then they can sure. pay two to get a 3-3. Three, three, which is better than Generous Gift in that sense. But if you're, like, if you're excising, like, an eight mana spell. <laughs> yeah, if you're excising Omniscient's. Then they're gonna spend that two mana and start hitting you with an eight eight. <laughs> yeah, that's... but like, but I think this is an exile this is, card's, over destroyed. This card's busted. Right? This card's card's got, you guys got me. Away. Oh, this is like yeah. the second best white removal spell. I think. I think generous whoa, whoa, gift. Whoa, whoa. I think is probably still slightly better, but I think this is like an auto include removal spell on the same level as generous gift. Like it, it's instant speed, same mana cost. It exiles, uh, and a lot of the times you're gonna be hitting something where. Uh, the mana value is high enough that it actually gives a incubate that's roughly the same size as a generous gift token, and your opponent has to pay mana to actually turn it into a creature anyway. So it's the the creature is worse. So I think this, I would rank it maybe slightly behind because it doesn't hit lands, and like you said, there are going to be times when the incubate's actually big. But I think in general, this is like staple level mm -hmm. commander all star removal spell. Okay, okay, okay. I, I need a rank little bit here. harder. To so cast. we have generous gift, beast within. They're the same card. Chaos yeah. warp. Where you're like YOLO something off the top, <laughs> right? Or Ablation. I can just give you two cards. Oh, or this is way XIZ better than Perfect. Ablation. Which, 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 I'm what, going what is our ranking Imperfect, of things yeah. we're scared of here to give our opponents? <laughs> generous Gift, uh, Generous Gift, Excise Imperfection, and then well, Ablation's yeah. way down. Like, the Incubate's way less value than two cards, I think. Hmm. Is it? I, I, I would got to figure so. out what the average thing because like yeah. if, if you like get the omniscience that omniscience player is not happy with you and you're eating like ten to the face or whatever <laughs> like immediately right like it's it's a heavy cost. I mean, what's the average mana value of your commander deck? Three, four, somewhere in the generous gift three three token range. I, I would that's assume true. it's also double white. It's harder to cast. This is like the yeah, that's a little bit harder. But to exiles, cast, but exiles. Yeah, exiles. Is that worth it though? But it doesn't hit lands. The... The exile, no, the exile's nice. I, I think it gets rid of the indestructible golem tokens, which are <laughs> <laughs> going to be troubling us in the near the future. Oh, the bad value, yes. the bad value is zero. <laughs> yes, it's fine. It does. Like, <laughs> I just, I like the idea that if I if I hit an aristic study with this, it's they're not getting it back with like an eternal witness or something afterwards. But the aristic study is gone. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be very real with you, Tomer. I, I don't feel like I've ever once like really reanimated my aristic study. <laughs> so like, like. <laughs> It could I, happen. I, it, you it could how much happen, I hate it if right. you would. <laughs> I, I mean, I clearly see that you dislike it, so don't don't worry. 
I just don't know who's like, ah, reanimate Ristic Study. So wait, so is this a staple? Is this what we're saying? This is like the first, first card in your I deck. I think it is. Generous gift, second card, excise the imperfect, and you're done with all your spot removal. <laughs> if I'm playing mono white, like I think that would yeah, I think those would be the first two that I would add. I, I don't really run. Sweet. Yeah. Do you not I run always generous focus gift? synergy over staples, but like this this card this card is definitely generous gift number two for me. I mean, but the, yeah, this has, this has no actual synergy with our deck, right? Gift. Unless we exile our own stuff to get an incubate, because the opponent gets the incubate. So wait, what it's is more Primoz like a say? flavor win? The beginning of, like, if Phyrexian are... under your control died. Yeah, so if you kill like someone else's Phyrexians die, you don't proliferate, right? So you have to fire this off on your own. Stuff. Yeah, but imagine, imagine if you will, somebody's targeting your dark steel, dark steel splicer with a removal spell, and you're like. <laughs> Excise it. I have a seven seven incubate now. Deal with I, guess, that. I guess it's better that you excise like, you know, an Eldrazi than let them hit you with the Eldrazi, right? Like I I don't want you to attack with the Ulamog, that's for sure. So yeah. you know what? I think it's it's good that it exiles. It adds a lot of uh value to it. Yeah. It's a good card. Uh, I I need to do the math. I, I need to take a note of what I do, but I actually like running oblation and I don't know if I'm willing to run this over Oblation as the second generous gift. So I actually have to see what actually gets removed and like how scary it is. Uh, All right. We'll figure it out in a different podcast, though. We'll we got more cards to go through. Filigree Vector. Three and a white. Artifact creature. Phyrexian Construct. It's a 1-1. One, one. When it enters a battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on each of any number of target creatures and a charge counter on each of any number of target artifacts. Pay one, tap it, sacrifice another artifact, proliferate. I've been talking about how some cards are not like super uh, synergistic with the rest of the deck necessarily. They're just like good cards. This card is like incredibly synergistic. This like as far as what Bermaz is doing, what the deck is doing, this card is doing like exactly what you want. It's putting a counter on all your things. So then as your Frexians die, Brimaz can proliferate the counters and all your creatures. It's putting charge counters on artifacts so you can do the same things. It's growing your incubation tokens. And then it's like a, a throne of geth where you can t- cash in some of your incubates that maybe they're small or you don't have enough mana for them to proliferate and grow your other stuff and grow the rest of your creatures. So I think this is in the precon itself, probably one of the best cards in the deck, just for like what the deck is trying gorgeous. to do. This is this is exactly what you want to be doing with in the deck, right? Like I think this is perfect for Bream Loss. Tailor made, yeah. yeah, literally a tailor made. They made this for the the precon. So I mean, cool. yes, <laughs> it is literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of artifacts in the deck, and like there's a lot, a of, lot artifact of artifacts features for well, right? Yeah, uh, love right. Does anything actually need charge counters in our deck? Um, that's a good question. That might be added to give it some relevance in other decks outside the pre-con. I don't yeah. see yeah, charge, don't really counters, charge counters, counters in the deck. In yeah. Our, our deck. But now you that's... can. Is but... that a card that requires charge checking. counters? Right? And then you win the game or something? Dark Steel uh, Reactor. Yeah, Dark, <laughs> Dark Steel <laughs> Reactor. Not in the deck, though. <laughs> That could be on the upgrade list. Yeah, I don't see anything with charge counters, but, you know. All right. We got, we got a team up card here. Moira and Teshar. Three white and a black. So five mana value. Legendary creature. Phyrexian spirit bird. Flying <laughs> four five. When you cast a historic spell, return target non-land permanent from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste, exile at the beginning of the next end step. If it would leave the battlefield, exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. Who is Moira? <laughs> I know Teshar. Moira's from, from Dominaria. She was like, Which, what's her normal? If card? a creature died this turn, like whenever she attacked, you could like return a creature that died this turn. Oh, was she? Oh, was she in Haunt? She's in the Dominaria. Was she in a commander pre con? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. but Teshar, te- this is, this feels like a Teshar card, not really a Moira card. It's, Maybe it's I'm pretty wrong, Teshari. Though. I mean, this yeah. card seems very strong, right? I don't know, like, so looking at our deck list, what does it do in our deck list? Like, we need to be casting Legends and in Artifacts most. I guess there is a Saga a in Frexian Scriptures. Yeah. There's a, there's a decent amount of Artifacts. 
so then you're you're getting back essentially stuff that died or you milled to the to the titan maybe and then you can Sock. reanimate stuff for the turn and smash your opponent with it yeah you i mean you, some, it's a sack deck, deck right so so you can just reanimate sack play more stuff proliferate right every time a fraction dies you proliferate right so it's just part of the engine of the deck yeah. It does go away forever, right? Like after it's you, unearthed, basically. Yeah, after yes. you get the thing back, yeah. it gets exiled. So you're that's not going to be triggering your brimaz. Oh no, because it's but, going to exile. So you can't sack to trigger brimaz. No, no. So it, it, it won't, it won't have it the death then. trigger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it replaces effect. But there's a lot of like just big top ends that have good ETBs. Like like if you, for example, just cast like. I don't know, a burnish chart, and then you trigger Moira, and you get back Coveted Jewel, you ETB, draw three cards, tap it for three mana, do whatever, cast another thing. There's, like, Mirror Battle Sphere that has ETB make mirrors and has a big attack trigger. There's, like, yep. Meteor Golem, Angel of the Ruins, blow up stuff. Um, so there's there's a lot yeah. of good stuff to get back with it, then. Yeah. Even, like, a Noxious Gear Hulk or a Massacre Worm, Dark like, just blows something up for me. Yeah. There's <laughs> the thing plenty we of wanted to reanimate, we can now reanimate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this card seems very powerful, right? Just, like, being able to free Gorio's Vengeance, essentially, when it hits artifacts, too. Like, that seems like a very strong card. Yeah. 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 I guess that was a bummer, but, like, it's definitely worth it. It could be the backup commander of this deck, right? Because it's also Orzhov and Legendary. Yeah, I feel you like don't you like could... Phyrexians. Like you, you could just be like, "I want to make a historic deck in this deck. This is really good." And uh, that's like a really good commander. I feel like you can build a really good deck around this. Like if you, if uh, a lot of the backup commanders, like they're fine if you want to run them as your precon commander, but they also give players something to like build around with their other cards. And I think if you build like a reanimation strategy around this, it could be very good. I mean, just take a Teshar deck, add black. <laughs> you don't get that. You don't really get what, the combos wait, okay, what, of Teshar, what's, what's right? The Moira so you can't. Deck? If you take a Moira deck and a Teshar deck, and you just jam them together. <laughs> I don't know why Moira is there. Is I, Moira's, hanging out. Moira's art is actually really cool, though. Yeah. So I mean, I, I I didn't know Moira was a card, honestly. Until, it's a combat until it damage up. trigger, return to a creature card from graveyard to the battlefield that died. Just, eh. How do you Phyrexianize a spirit? Actually, I take that back. They Phyrexianize a god. But... <laughs> they right, Phyrexianize whatever. anything. Path of the Schemer, <laughs> four and a black. So five mana value sorcery. Each player mills two cards. Then you put a creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It's an artifact in addition to its other types. Will of the Planeswalker, starting with you, each player votes Planeswalk or Chaos. If Planeswalk gets more votes, Planeswalk. If Chaos gets more votes... Or the vote is tied, chaos ensues. So this is a plain chase card. Yeah. Card, basically, I mean, it costs you, like, one mana. Like, it, like that the will of the planeswalker ability, right? Yeah. So, like, I can see what's over. Like, you don't need to have plain chase to make this card, right? This card is five mana, mill to reanimate, right? Yeah. Wait, aren't we playing commander, though, where, like, reanimate, animate dead. Isn't your reanimation like one mana in commander or two mana in commander? But this to is me, this card seems like and they mills stone them. unplayable unless oh. you're... Like, if I'm playing plane chase, this card's great. Like, this is a free way for me to, like, do the plane chase thing. But if I'm not playing plane chase... But that's not great, right? I you think I would just, like, immediately... Mana, you pay one more mana to roll a plane or die. That's, like, two mana. <laughs> like... Reanimate $17. But you get to vote. You get to vote, <laughs> too. Yeah. I guess you can it's force the... chaos or something. Like, if you want to trigger the chaos ability or something like that, like, you can force it. Whereas when you're rolling to die, it's... It's random, and also you might have to roll multiple times to planes walk away, right? Because you may not actually get it, right? So it's probably fair. I don't know. I, I feel like, am I wrong? If I'm playing plane chase, then this is cool. But otherwise, are you not just removing this and replacing it with something else or no? Like, let's say you get you open your precon deck. You're like, oh, these planes are cool. Maybe I'll use them someday and put them on a shelf and forget about them. Is this remaining in your deck long term, or are you looking to upgrade that slot? How much does Animate Dead cost? Uh, uh, Probably two. like five bucks. Oh, yeah. Five, I don't like, know. Let me check. What's the cheapest un- animation like, spell? Like How much could it be? Is this better than that? <laughs> it's like eight. Animate bucks. Dead. Five bucks. There's some five dollar oh, versions. It. Yeah, this card's I mean, very. Eh. 
<laughs> what about you got like ever after you get to reanimate two things for six mana zombify is like a co- uncommon that's one mana less but this card yeah. mills each player mills. so yeah. that's pretty cool <laughs> mill plan yes <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sort of on. <laughs> i would see me playing this not for really anything other than it mills and maybe i get to steal some cards all from right. they, they can't all be bangers okay maybe this one is yeah. <laughs> this one is maybe, a, maybe is we're undervaluing will of the planeswalkers but like if you don't care about plane chase uh well, this probably would be a card actually cut. i actually wanted to ask you that because i haven't played plane chase what if I'm not playing Plane Chase? How do you resolve this card? Do you just ignore that, just ignore that, that. second part of tax and just you play like a normal tax. reanimation well, spell? You okay. can still vote. It does not <laughs> I need to yeah. know. You, you, yes, to you actually make everyone vote. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can't skip that. There's like there's a reprint in the deck, Fractured Power Stone, which has been uh, Commander Legal forever. You can tap it for, to add one mana, or you can tap it to roll the planar die. If you do that in a Commander game and you're not using Plane Chase, it just doesn't do anything. That's all. So same thing you, with Phil the Plains Walkers. Do you get to roll the die, though? <laughs> if you have a planar die on okay, you, I guess okay. you, could, you could roll, but it doesn't have a game game. It wouldn't mechanic do anything, yeah. That yeah. makes sense. Next up, Vulpine Harvester. Three and a white, four mana value. Three, three, Phyrexian Fox. Whenever one or more Phyrexians you control attack, return target artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield if its mana value is less than or equal to their total power. How do you feel about Zoids, Richard? Look, look at that. It's a, it's a, it's an adorable dog. Look how, or a fox. Sorry, it's a fox. <laughs> it's a fox. Get it right. Um, what would yeah. this fox say? <laughs> oh no! Oh god! <laughs> how how big are the Phyrexians in our so, deck here? So there's there's big enough for like we talked about the like Grave Titan Phyrexian. and that by itself is a six six, and you got this as a three three. It seems like with any like two or three at the most Phyrexians on the battlefield, any uh, that are in the deck, you should be able to reanimate any artifact in the deck. Uh, the question is, yeah. like, how do, you, how do you get the artifacts in the graveyard? I know you mentioned this, Tomer, like sacrifice and self-mill synergies. What cards are we actually looking at that are going to help us get stuff in the graveyard with this deck? Path of the Schemer. Yep. There okay. Is. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, it Blight, okay. Blight Titan that nobody Titan. liked. Yeah. To, I, I liked it. Okay, I did yeah. not like it, but I you can it you can also you can also sacrifice things to filigree vector that you want to uh, get back immediately afterwards. Like you tap the soul ring, you float one mana, you sacrifice it to the filigree vector, you attack with a Phyrexian. Anything that's mana value two or higher will get back to soul ring. So there's like I mean there's things, and I guess even just like played fairly. You have some big artifact threats that people are going to probably try to kill. Mirror Battle Sphere, for example, or like Soul and New Phyrexia. That's stuff that's like pretty big bodies that people are going to try to get off the battlefield. And then this is a nice little form of recursion. Like, I think it's, I like that there's some recursion in the deck. Like, you're that's into right. super efficient one too, right? So, mm-hmm. when you... Oh, the incubates, yeah. Yeah, when, 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 yeah. You, when you incubate and you uh, proliferate and make them big, you can then get back your other creatures uh so i, I also you should have a shortage of being able to trigger this yeah my my concern is not being able to trigger it i think like it should be pretty easy to be getting everything back it was just, i was just wondering like how mm-hmm. how much stuff we're gonna have in the graveyard for it in the actual pre-con one thing i also really like about it is it triggers whenever any Phyrexians attack. So it kind of has, like, pseudo-haste with its ability. If you have some big incubates on the battlefield, a uh, uh, coveted jewel or a mere battle sphere in the graveyard, you can play this and it doesn't have to attack. You can attack with your other stuff and still be able to use its ability, which I think actually makes it way more powerful than having to attack with a, a hill giant itself, essentially. So this can just stay back and stay safe and use your big incubates as the attackers to do the reanimation stuff. I mean, you have Mind Stone in the deck. You can uh, oh, sack oh, a commander a, spear. Oh, oh, that sounds like combo. something I would do. <laughs> also, half, half the creatures are a big one, right? And yeah. half the creatures are are artifacts, by the way. So, yeah. like, yeah, there's a plan. Like, you targets. can get back gear hulks, stuff like that, right? Gear hulks, your burnish yep, hearts, yep, and stuff. Yep. It's a good fox, and it's another fox. It's a four mana three three two. It's not nice. like disgustingly understated, right? You, you just get a this little is, value it, from it, and it's good. It's just yeah. like a better sun titan, you know, specifically a Phyrexian deck. 
and an artifact deck but yeah you gotta be yeah, if you're yeah, in the yeah. things that it cares about in, in yeah. this in this such deck. as this free card <laughs> in, this, in this particular free card <laughs> alright last new card Iker Elixir 4 mana artifact uh, if you would roll one or more planar dice, instead roll that many planar dice plus one and ignore one. Tap, add two generic. Well, this is so Krark's that, thumb for plain planar dice. dice. But it, <laughs> with the it is good literally. It, oh, wait, hold on, hold on. <laughs> First off, a it's Iker. I found this out by the way. I don't know if y'all know this. <laughs> wow. I, what? I thought it's yeah. Iker. No, it it, it, deri- it it's it comes from the Greek language. I, I I think I was told it's Iker. So I've been saying it wrong this whole time. Oh, no. Anyway, is it. it like uh, is it like Bogles? It's Iker. Boggles? It's actually Bogles, okay, it's but Iker, no, one can, no one says it. <laughs> I uh, technically I, I I it could be. I just know that the pr- pr- the correct way to pronounce it is Iker and I've been doing it wrong this whole time. So uh, Iker. I've been cr- yeah, but Iker Elixir is pretty, pretty... Okay, this... Unless you really just want a four mana, add two mana, like, this really needs plane chase, right? Like, yeah. this really needs plane chase. Uh, yeah. You're is not this, like, a this... staple in a plane chase deck, though? Like, is that not what you want to be doing, is roll double so you can get more chances at chaos yeah. and more chances at planeswalking when you want to? 100%. This is definitely... You don't even have to pay two mana and sacrifice it to, <laughs> to do that nonsense. Although, uh, I you... think did it would make it better because then it would draw cards because you could play it in a non-plane chase setting no no, no, i wouldn't draw cards i mean if you're if you're playing plane chase then yeah this is great and then if you're not playing plane chase you can just trade in your hedron archives and that's a very very cheap way to upgrade yeah no hedron archives are already on the deck unfortunately but there's like stone speakers crystal is it worth though what if you just play thran dynamo and use that extra mana you generate to roll an extra planar die. <laughs> I mean, why not just like take out Hedron Archive for Thran Dynamo and you'd already be doing better too? I don't know. <laughs> some, some, some of these are mysteries of life, Richard. I don't know. Hmm. I mean, it seems worth it for. I mean, it seems fun at least. Depends like, if you I don't know. build your deck to try to like abuse your planes or you just put planes in for like fun. You know, like, mm. you're like, ah, I don't know, right? Like, whatever, right? Or you're like, no, no, I'm, like, being really sweaty here, and all these planes, like, <laughs> benefit me and only me, and, like, I it's gotta, so- like, planes walk to the right one to, like, destroy everyone, right? <laughs> like, I think it's, like, stickers, though, because you need you need a minimum of uh, 10 planes per per person at the table, so, so you need 40, 40 right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 40, so there's, like, no, yeah. I don't think there's, like, looking at the planes that we have, the 10 that we have, there's no way that, like, all of them are going to be, 40 of them are going to be, like, super good for you. Yeah, but there's stuff like so. Esper and stuff that are obviously very good. All right. Or Speaking stuff that's, of, obvi- yeah, go ahead. Speaking oh. of planes, we talked about Esper. We have four yeah. more new ones. Um, these are your, your favorite. I, I really like these because I'm like, oh, I know this location. Uh, so yeah. here, <laughs> here's Ketria, okay? Do, do, do we, okay, here we go. Pop quiz. What plane is Ketria from? Ikoria. Ikoria. It's a triumph. Ikoria. It's a triumph. Plane. I saw Tober blank yeah. it out, but the other guys got it. <laughs> no, no. I was like, yeah. I was like, is this a real question? We've all played Magic the Gallery. You, you Catch your triumph? Attention? I don't know. It's like the purple land. Which one is it? Who <laughs> <laughs> leads all the magic stories at this table? Raise your head. So it, it is playing Ikoria. <laughs> when you planes walk to Ketria, and at the beginning of your upkeep, put your choice of Vigilance, Menace, or Trample Counter on target creature you control. And then the chaos abilities, whenever chaos ensues, exile cards on the top of your library until you exile a non-land permanent. Put that card onto the battlefield or into your hand. Ooh. I mean, that's Ooh. pretty rad. And every chaos is, like, pretty chaosy. It's actual chaos. Yeah. And yeah, uh, very you get to uh, start growing your creatures or giving them more abilities. So I like that. I have no context to evaluate this plane because I don't know what the other ones do, but this seems like a fun plane. Yeah. <laughs> Free things are always fun. Okay. Uh, Naktuman Nak- Nak- from Amonkhet. Uh, each creature card in your graveyard has Embalm. Its Embalm cost is equal to its mana cost. Hmm. Whenever That's chaos ensues, rad. you may discard a card if you do draw a card. Okay, so chaos kind of sucks, but... Uh, the Embalm Wait, every team. The this seems great with the pre-con, right? Yeah. 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 Like, like you take this pre-con and you play, you get this plane. This is perfect. You're self-milling. You're doing all of that. And you even, 
Where whereas not as many people were high in Path of the Schemer, once you add Plane Chase in Path of the Schemer is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean I mean people probably want to try to planes walk away from here. <laughs> like, like, oh look, yeah. it's your reanimator well, deck, if, right? Let's get out yeah, of here. You, you, I don't yeah, know, the reanimator deck is pretty you want to leave. You want to leave as soon a, as possible. I still don't think our deck's that good at filling the graveyard. You guys are much higher on our deck's ability to fill the graveyard than I am. <laughs> so far yeah. I, I think Esper is so far the best because artifact spells cost one less to cast and we have like twenty five yep. cards that are artifacts, so Yeah. Power. You can reanimate the go- golem guy. Golem. Guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean this one's great. This one's guys. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> okay, Nyx from Theros. Non-token creatures are enchantments in addition to the other types. Whenever yeah. an enchantment enters a battlefield under your control, you gain one life. Bruh. Whenever chaos ensues, choose a color. Add an amount of mana of that color equal to your devotion uh, to that color. Uh, so mm. we're getting out of here, right? We, we're like a colorless if, deck. If somebody's Not playing Enchantress, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're, we're, that, we're, we're scared. Wait, yeah, I make, think you're rolling to get away from this so one. Good. Yeah. 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 This is yeah. just like salivating on the side over there. <laughs> yeah, I think, I, I think, yeah, definitely try to get out of this Wait, one. This is legitimately just Enchanted <laughs> Evening, right? Well, it also has like the Nykthos effect for Chaos. Sure, but yeah. what I'm saying is, like, so then I could just, like, Heliod's intervention everybody's lands. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, true. <laughs> like, no, 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 it's <laughs> non-token creatures. It's only non-token, non-token, non-token creatures. creatures, yeah. Okay, yeah, not, yeah, not yeah. token Thank, permanence. Thankfully. Yeah, I don't know. They knew people like you would do this, Krem. I don't, I'm not saying I would, I'm just saying it's funny, like, you could. <laughs> All right, last, last new plane is The Pit. Oh. Do you guys know where this is from? I think this is Forgotten Realms. The abyss. I do not. What, what is what is the uh, abyss? The, the so plane is the abyss. Abyss is like the demon demon plane in like most D and D cosmology. No, it's not D and D because we have Lord of the Pit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, maybe the they maybe MTG think, also has an abyss. This is Lord of the Pit, right? Because look look at yeah. the abilities. When you planes walk to the pit, uh, each player creates their choice of a three three white angel creature token with flying, or a six six black demon creature with. Flying, trample, and at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice another creature. If you can't, this creature deals six damage to you. So you're making like a little Lord of the Pit there. Uh, whenever chaos ensues, each player sacrifices a non-artifact creature. Oh, it's like, it's literally the the Abyss. Isn't that the Abyss's <laughs> ability? The old yeah. world enchantment? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so according to MTG Wiki, it's like just synonymous for hell. Okay. The void between planes, but it doesn't really look like a void to me, so it's just synonymous <laughs> with hell. <laughs> so, so which of these planes do you think is actually best with our deck? Like, if you were trying to aggressively roll to find a, a plane, which one would you be searching for? I think it's Esper. 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 I mean, because we're like half an artifact deck. Yeah, it's either it's Esper or, or Noctuman. Noctuman. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, probably Esper, I think. The pit's probably fine because we have a lot of artifact creatures, so the chaos mode doesn't really hurt us as much. Yeah, that one's good, but probably that, ki- that kills Bremaz though. <laughs> no, wait, what? What? What was Bremaz? Well, we could sacrifice like a Phyrexian Rager or some some garbage. Yeah, instead. Okay, sacrifice the angel. Sacrifice the angel. Can't can't sacrifice angels. Okay, and uh, so those are all the cards. So, Tomer, when we, whenever yes. we evaluate a precon, we like to uh, just kind of look at kind of the the macros of it. Uh what what it has for removal, card draw, interaction, things like that. Can you run us through what our deck has? Absolutely. So, looking at uh like just the general ratios of the deck, I counted uh 38 lands. 13 ramp options, um, five card draw spells, cards that uh, put uh, two or more cards in your hand um, directly, um, or are repeatable card card advantage engines, like they draw one each turn, for example. Um, 11 targeted removal spells, three board wipes. I, I define board wipes as stuff that like hit three or more permanents when you cast them, like hit or like, hit like all, all creatures, all artifacts, all whatever. Um, and then eight graveyard recursion spells, zero flexible tutors, uh, one graveyard hate, it's Bajuka Bog, 
And then three cards that I I would define as like finishers, stuff that like you just play them and you don't really need like a big board sitter or anything, but they'll they'll be able to close out games pretty quickly. Um and yeah. So I think I think in the general ratios it seems pretty darn good. Like I typically go for like fifty mana, ten card draw, eight removal, three board wipes, two graveyard recursion, two tutors, one graveyard hate, and at least one finisher. Um this the only one here that I was a little bit worried about is the card draw is very low. Um, and I think they they kind of compensate for the fact that you're going to be sinking your mana into incubate like uh using on the incubator uh tokens. Like Brimaz, for every card you play, you want to spend an additional two mana to make another creature. So I think that's kind of like the thought process behind drawing less cards in the in the deck. And it has uh, a high amount of recursion. The recursion options that we saw are very good. Um, that can kind of compensate for the card draw, but I do think uh, if I was making any changes to this deck, I would add more card draw to the deck. <laughs> I've noticed you've omitted Hedron Archive from your card draw. That is a card draw <laughs> option. <laughs> that that is, card doesn't that exist to Tomer. Tomer doesn't, bait. yeah. <laughs> doesn't I, yeah that, uh, six mana draw two? Wow. You have okay. like very That's powerful engines though, right? You have Coveted Jewel, yes. which you can sack and bring back, which is like yes. insane value. Yeah. Uh, but I'm surprised there's so few board wipes. I, I I would actually imagine one of the main modes of playing this deck is to like have a little incubated army and then wipe the board yeah. and then like hatch them. Uh, so yeah. I would actually try to stuff in more board wipes. Obviously, you don't want to run like farewell, which would kill all your little you incubated Phyrexians before they come out <laughs> and ruin your reanimation sub theme. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I would like to see a little more board wiping to kind of keep those like incubated yeah. Phyrexians and give them an advantage, right? They're just sitting there hatching. You can Sorry, yeah. four board wipes. I forgot Phyrexian what scriptures, are, but like, yeah. What are the other board wipes? There's Phyrexian Rebirth, Phyrexian scriptures. What are the, the other two? Massacre, Massacre worm, worm, which is like a soft board wipe. Like uh, it only kills small creatures. And then yeah. Cataclysmic Gear Hulk. Which yeah. uh, it cuts oh. down the number of permanents. Yeah, like that, everybody that gets one artifact. That's things, actually though. awkward. Yeah, that was yeah, not very good either. Incubators. Hmm. I think. Yeah, I think, I think I Phyrexian Rebirth Richard. and Phyrexian Scriptures and Massacre Worm. Those are really good. I'd keep those. and would probably get rid of the Gear Hulk for. Yeah. I don't know. Like an austere command. Something. I think I Massacre know. Worm is probably good because it's a Phyrexian, but I don't know if it I is. consider it a board wipe. But I think it's like synergistic in the deck because of its creature yeah. type. But I think Richard's right. Maybe cut down on like some of the endless targeted removal to have more <laughs> like actual sweepers because it actually synergizes. It does synergize really well with Brimaz. Yeah, there's some ones that I I'm not super super happy with. Like Utter End in the deck, for example, seems that a little bit overcosted. I thought we liked Utter yeah. End. It's it's four mana. <laughs> In the current it's, year, it's like okay. is it anguish I'm making expensive though? I'm I'm not actually it's sure. Like I thought, yes, end, I thought the expensive. conclusion was utter end was like not actually that bad, but I don't think it's. Very what about good, go but... for the throat? That's a weird one. Go for the throat. I'd cut. I'd cut <laughs> that's, that. that's a crim special. Yeah. There, you just play. I cut that card. <laughs> like, yeah, I, that's not even a crim. That's it's not standard. What are you doing? Get, get out of here! I would cut I, that. Yeah. And more. I, I mean, you know, my I would I would cut eight yeah. of these spot removal spells and then put in eight yeah, board sure. wipes, and then <laughs> that'd be good. Deck would be awesome. <laughs> oh, I, I missed I missed the excise too, so it's actually 12, 12 target removal. <laughs> excise I, one perfect. This number is well. <laughs> I appreciate the fetid heath in the mana base. I know that's one thing we've talked about before is the yeah. quality of the mana base, and fetid heath is actually like. A pretty legit dual land, a filter land, which I don't think I have remember seeing, like, the, the real filter lands in Commander Precons before. It's usually, like, the old Odyssey ones that are not as good, so... God, those are so bad. And it's, Odyssey it's a pretty expensive reprint, too. Speaking of which, actually, we should talk about the most expensive reprints in the deck. Um, and right. I think... Highly yeah. valuable cards, or highly desired cards that come in this Very deck. desirable. Uh, Masker Worm. Uh, yep. Ancient Stone Idol. Uh, did you know Knight's Whisper is actually like over two dollars? I did not. Uh, uh, Phyrexian Scriptures, worth a decent chunk. Yep. Fetid Heath, Cardin's Bastion. Cardin's Bastion is almost six dollars right now. Can you yeah. believe it? And people like so to like, I don't know. They're like five mana to proliferate. Yeah. They're why is it, I, I'm why not is ex- essentially excited about any of these? 
H yeah, why stone is idol jump stone idol? Me. I'm so confused. Like that's all I stuff. looked that up. I've never seen anyone play it, and then I looked on EDH rec, and it's zero percent on EDH rec. Why is that the most valuable card in our entire deck? It's like, I'm so 2018. Good. I couldn't tell you. It's been, yeah. it's only seen one printing. Yeah, that's true. It is a golem. I guess it like it's good in our deck because of some of the synergies. Yeah. Golem. <laughs> I mean, every time I build a deck for Commander Clash, I always try to play Triniform and Ancient Stone Idol. And there's one more. There's another big golem. And then I never have oh. any reason to play them. <laughs> that, one's a, that one's the good one, though. It's like flies and stuff, and it one, makes smaller ones. One of them ones, came on Moto, and I'm like, yes, yes. And I'm like, there's like no reason to be playing this. I'm like, I don't know. So I'm actually kind of excited about this deck, because you have some excuse to run the golems, but they're Phyrexian, so it's cool. Like, you actually have some other synergies. Um mm-hmm. But, yeah. I mean, the deck itself looks really fun. Like, I, I like the new mechanic. I think Incubate's, like, a really powerful mechanic. It's cool to see the deck being built around that. I think Brimaz is actually a really powerful commander for the deck. And even though, I guess, you with a precon, you can always be like, oh, could use more Rast or use more of this. Or, it looks like a really, like, solidly constructed deck. Like, I could imagine opening this up at a Magic Fest or Magic Con or Command Fest or something and just, like, playing it and, like, keeping up with a random pod of people. Like, not a CDH-style pod, but, like, if you're playing with other people playing casual decks, I think you'll do just fine with it. So, I don't know. It looks like a, a solid a solid precon to me. It looks There's sweet. a lot of I, I, solid I, staples in here, even if they're not expensive, right? You obviously have Soul Ring, which is in every precon, but you have, like, Arcane Signet... Um, you have your your Orzhov Signet, you have Mindstone, you have Commander Sphere, so cards that are basically usable in all decks. Uh, Coveted Jewel, which I really like, is in here. Swords to Plowshares, if you're one of those players, right? Uh, Knight's Whisper, D Spark. Like, there's a lot of cards here that you can just put in any just random deck. Uh, and then, like Seth said, the mana base is actually kind of decent for a precon for a two color. Um, so you can. Use that. Like, I mean, a lot snarl. of the value is in the mana base, right? Fetid Heath and Snarl's Bastion, <laughs> right? Snarl. Don't forget Snarl. Did you say the Snarl? Snarl's is the Snarl in here? It is in here. There's a shiny yeah. shadow Snarl. I take I back just... my compliments to the mana. I can't compliment <laughs> a mana base with a Snarl in it. Mm. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Actually, we uh, didn't mention this card, but Nettles this seems absurd in this deck. <laughs> Nettles this with all the incubates it is in the deck, to, like, yeah. To make so many artifacts on the battle. That's one of the cards going back to what we talked about at the very beginning. Like, artifact land. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Nils is, yeah, with all the incubator tokens, that's actually. It's going to make a really huge, yeah, really huge, huge uh, germ. Yeah. I I like this deck a lot. I think it's it's very sweet. Um, It should be moderately powerful too. It should hang at like casual tables, no problem. I also like that they had the added like planar thing. It's flavorful for the story because Phyrexia is uh, invading a bunch of planes. But I also appreciate that they didn't make it like uh, the main uh, focus of the deck. There's only three cards that care about it, I believe. Only three cards in the deck that care about it. And then you get these 10 planar cards. And then you can be just like, hey, um, do you guys want to try out Plane Chase for this game? And then people m- might try it out. And if not, then you just ignore a little bit of text or whatever, or you replace three cards with the deck. It's not it's not a big deal. It's not the main focus. So I think it's kind of like a little bonus, which I appreciate. I don't like I, I don't want to do it all the time, but I like that they tried something different with this one. Yeah, it's nice to have the option, to, especially like it seems great for if you're like a play group who plays together all the time, like you're playing every week or a couple times a week. It's nice to have the option to break things up and do something a little bit different. And like you said, it doesn't really impact the decks in a meaningful way. And if you're someone who thinks you're rarely going to play a uh, plane chase, you can take out the three plane chase cards and you can still use the deck to play plane chase. Like you, can, you don't need those cards to make a plane chase work. So I like that they added that option, too. All right, so that wraps up our walkthrough of Groving Threat, the Orzov March of the Machine uh, commander deck led by Brimaz. Uh, if you check out the show notes, we'll have a link to the deck list. Uh, so you can actually check out the deck list, uh, look at all the cards in detail. We didn't have time to go over all the reprints. So if you're not familiar with some of these cards, you can actually take a look at the reprints. And then, of course, the new cards will be there as well. Uh, so, yeah. Thank you, everyone, for uh, joining us on this deep dive of Growing Threat, and uh, we'll see you all next time.